and konnichiwa, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. I'm your host, Rick the Barkeep, bringing you episode 145 here at the Tavern, presented by Hirotaku.com. So last week, Power Rangers Dino Supercharge uh, premiered in the United States, and while I have not seen that episode yet, um, there is some buzz uh, about Power Rangers uh, Dino Supercharge outside of just the Power Ranger community. Um, you know, I'm willing to bet if you go to your Facebook page right now and you subscribe to, to multiple uh, media outlets, um, you know, whether it's Cimablin, Den of Geeks, or, or whatever, there, there are a number of those out there. Uh, you're probably seeing headlines talking about Power Rangers Dino Supercharge, 10 Red Rangers, the largest Power Rangers team in, in Power Rangers history. Uh, even Nickelodeon, that's how they're writing their advertisements. 10 Power Rangers, OMG, it is the headline that we're getting. Um, even though there's probably going to be 11 with the Talon Ranger, you know, 10 good guys at least. That's what everybody seems to be gravitating towards. And, you know, 10 Rangers, hey, that's great. Uh, when Kyo Kyojur came out and they had the 10 Rangers, I thought that was, you know, that was pretty cool. You know, n nothing particularly wrong with that. But when I read these headlines and listen to what people are saying, it's it just starting to reinforce something that's kind of been in the back of my mind for a number of years. Um, with both Power Rangers and Super Sentai. And that's the fact that we have so many Rangers that we are sacrificing characters for another warm body in a, in a spandex suit. And, and let me go ahead and kind of explain what I'm talking about. So right now, uh, we are one episode away from the final of Nin Ninja. And, uh, and of course, I'm, I'm liking that series. It's a vast improvement of Tokyujer. And one of the reasons it's a vast improvement is it does have character development for just about all the Rangers. I mean, here's the sad truth about Tokyujer. Tokyujer had character development for two, maybe three of the Rangers, right? Uh, was front and center for the entire series. Uh, Akira got some character development there. Uh, and Mio had a little bit here and there. But as far as the other Rangers, Kagura nothing, um, Hikari, nothing, Takachi, really nothing. I mean, you can argue that the characters, um, you know, because a character has to either change or refuse change, and it's that journey of either accepting or refusing change that makes them interesting. The fact of the matter is the series did not focus on those other characters at all. I mean, we maybe got three, possibly four Kagura stories, and... All four of them really sucked. Um, they didn't offer anything in the advancement of her character. She is literally the same character we met in Episode 1 as we see in, in the final episode. Now, the Ninja has gotten better about it. And, and I'll say this up front. This will be covered in, in my uh, Ninja review video. Um, but I did not like Katsumi. I did not like Momo Ninja. I did not like her at the beginning. But the character growth that she actually went through in the series... I like her a little bit better now. She's not my favorite, but I do like her as a better character because, you know, she went through that. And that's something the Ninja has over Tokyujer is more character development. That being said, um, there are still a couple of characters in that season that don't get enough development because we are folk. We have six Rangers. We have the father. We have grandfather. We have all these villains. And we are developing their characters and seeing their journeys at the expense of others. I mean, the, the, the truth of the matter is, not every character is getting character development in the series. That they are just there, they get a couple of episodes dedicated to them, but overall, they're not that important to the plot. And with this ranger creep, with, you know, all these extra rangers being added, um, you know, I just think we're getting too unwieldy to where... Yeah, it's great that we get a guest star that's in a couple of episodes to, you know, d develop and do things, um, but we don't spend nearly enough time with those characters. Let's, let's go to Dino Charge at the moment. Believe it or not, my two favorite characters from Dino Charge right now, well, actually, let me put, my three favorite characters from Dino Charge are Coda, Prince Philip, and Albert. Yeah, those are my three favorite characters right now. Um, and sadly... Albert's only in one episode, and as far as I know, he's not appearing in Dino Supercharge. Now, he he's obviously a Power Ranger for one episode, then he gives up his powers, and we know Kendall's going to go ahead and get them um, later on. 
but he's a character that I like, and I would like to see character development with him. I'd like to see him continue. I'd like to see him do more things. But when you have a cast of 10 Rangers, and then you're going to replace at least one of them, it's really hard to keep up with character development. Not to mention, there's only 40 episodes. I mean, let's look at Prince Philip, my, my other favorite character from, from that season. He appears in one episode, is a jackass at the beginning, and then halfway, he becomes a decent guy, and then by the end of the episode, he resolves to change. He went through an entire season's worth of arcs within a 22-minute format, which is great. You know, I have no real problem with telling those types of stories, but you want to see more of him because he is such a great character, and he has only, in my count, only been in three episodes of Dino Charge. His introductory episode, the episode where he becomes the Graphite Ranger, and then the, the episode um, where they go up to Sledge's ship. You know, you, you don't see much of him. But what if we had more episodes? Could we, you know, develop the character a little bit more? Could we do more with them? Absolutely. But he is a secondary ranger to the primary six. Because for whatever reason, we don't want to focus on the other rangers. We want to focus on our first five or first six. It's It seems, and this is the same thing in Sentai Origin, is that we focus on the main six, but we don't look at the more interesting characters. Like, again, I always say Yeo is a far more interesting character to look at than Soji. You know, um, why didn't we focus on her? But but let's get into another subject. Here's the point I want to get at. I think we're at a point where we have so many Rangers that we are doing a disservice to the character and story of the series. And I'm talking about both Sentai and Power Rangers. Um, Lin Carr famously pointed out in Ninja Storm, you start with Shane, Dustin, and Tori, and then two episodes later, you get two more Rangers added to the mix barely got to know those characters and set up the status quo before you mixed up with new characters that we now have to focus on, understand their stories, their backgrounds, their identities, all that stuff. So what can we do to focus on our characters more? Because every season, somebody gets left out. I mean, Mighty Morphin, I think the person who got the short in the stick of character development, unfortunately, was Trini. Uh, Time Force, Katie, she definitely got the short in there. Lightspeed Rescue, Kelsey, it seems to be a thing with Yellow Rangers. Even Neen Ninja, Key Ninja, he seems to be the one who's getting the least character development. I guess if you're a Yellow Ranger, don't count on much character development. Uh, Mystic Force, Vita, I think she got the least type of character development in that particular season. Although, again, that season was mainly on the secondary characters to to begin with. Every season, there's one or two rangers that really just get thrown to the curbside. I mean, without watching an episode of Time Force, what do you remember about Katie other than her super strength? What can you really tell me about her character? Not much. But if I ask you to tell me about Jen, well, there's a ton of things you could tell me about Jen because, honestly, the series was really focused on her as a character. They were focused on Wes as a character, focused on Eric as a character, which is great. But the problem is that was detriment to Katie and Trip and Lucas. They didn't get much character because the series did focus on those three mainly. I mean, frankly, you could have a series where it is just those three rangers. And to my ultimate point, eight minutes, uh, eight and a half minutes into this video, maybe we should talk about going back to a three ranger team and only three rangers. Uh, most famously, Sun Vulcan. Three rangers, that's it. No more rangers uh, after that. It was just those three and I think two secondary characters, and that was it. Now, while I have not seen the series, I have it on Torrent, but I have not watched it yet, I'm willing to bet you that there was a lot of character development between each of those rangers, and possibly through the secondary characters, because they had such a limited cast. You can know more about them, you can, you know, tell more stories, do more interesting things. And yes, there was a Red Ranger switch out, but, you know, I'm sure that, again, with the number of episodes they had and only three of them, there's a lot you can go ahead and tell. Now, ideally, would I like to expand the series, you know, where we have multiple seasons of characters? I mean, look at Billy. Episode 1, Day of the Dumpster, how he was compared to uh, Rangers of Two Worlds and where he ended up. But he had four se uh, seasons of development. And say what you will, but, you know, Donald Charge is technically one season. It's just spread out over two years. It's 40 episodes. But, you know, what if you had four years to tell the story of Albert, the, the Purple Ranger? 
you know, th that would be far more interesting. But, but we can't do that. So if we can't expand out the number of years and episodes, then I think we should decrease the number of rangers on the team. And not start out with three rangers and add two more as we eventually go along, and then add a sixth one or a seventh one or anything like that. I mean, that's what happened with Goanger. Keep it to three rangers. Just that. Three Rangers the entire season. Do 50 episodes of Sentai where it's just three Rangers. Don't add in another Ranger uh, at all. Secondary characters, yeah, you can do that, but don't add another Ranger to the series. Um, you know, Power Rangers, uh, you know, let's do the same thing. Three Rangers um, and, and, and no more beyond that. Um, because, again, we, we, we are running into a point where in Power Rangers we're just rushing through the entire series. We have 40 episodes to tell a story, compress it down from 50 and a, and a couple of movies over in Japan. You know, I don't know what the thought process is going to down charge. I mean, so far they've done a good job of trying to balancing, of, of balancing the characters on down charge, but they're like, we got 10 Rangers. What kind of stories are we going to tell with 10 Rangers? Because that's a daunting task for anybody, you know, no matter how many episodes you have within one season. Even if you had 60 episodes, that's still rather difficult to, to, to do that. Um, but I think we should go to a three ranger format. And if you're worried about toy sales, first of all, I don't care about that. That's not what this is about. I'm talking about character development. And two, you can sell anything. You don't need to have six, ten rangers to sell toys. Okay, let's 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 get that out of the way first. But in terms of character development, we need to do three rangers so that each ranger has enough time to flesh out their story and go through some sort of character arc. Um, you know, let's let's just take a season uh, for example here. Let me pull, pull one out. Let's go ahead and take, um, okay, SPD. Uh, so what if you just had Jack, Sky, um, and Z, okay? the three characters that have the, probably the more interesting stories in there. You you didn't have Bridge in there. I, honestly, I could care less about Bridge. You know, buttery, whatever. You know, throw him out. Uh, Sid, waste of space. Um, our Omega Ranger Sam. Um, you know, I, I'm not opposed to the ball light thing, but yeah, let's get rid of him. Let's make Kruger just a, um, you know, a mentor. And then, of course, let's get rid of Cat because I always hated her character as well. And then no Nova, anything like that. The point is, just have those three characters and you got Kruger as the mentor and all that. Imagine how much deeper you could go into Jack's backstory of how he ended up on the streets, what his family situation was like, uh, why why he's with Z, how their friendship developed. Because I don't even think we even had an episode where it showed how Jack and Z ever met. Um, and show Sky do more with his father. You know, show some more flashbacks or, you know, have an episode where his father comes back or something. The, the point is, is that because we had eventually, let's see, what was it, nine rangers, because we didn't have D gold, and we had all these secondary characters, we focused on f too many stories and didn't get enough. I mean, again, Sid, she was completely useless. I, I think the thing was, she was like a rich girl, and then she becomes a police officer, but it turns out her parents were scientists or something. I mean, come on. She was really a waste of space, and d again, other than her hands turned into diamonds, what do you remember about her? And I'm not saying it's anything against the character. It's the way they handled the character. They had to juggle all these stories, and they had characters that were far more interesting. They could tell better stories with, and then they just have this girl that, well, we're going to do like kind of a one-done thing, and then there's nothing really else to her that we need to go ahead and do. And again, there are a number of seasons uh, that do that, but imagine if SPD was just our three rangers, a red, blue, and a yellow ranger, and Commander Kruger. You know, and again, you can still do Kruger stuff without turning him into a ranger. Um, I mean, I, I just kind of hate the things like, it's almost like everybody has to be a ranger. If you show up uh, in the series, you must be a ranger by the time that it ends. Um, you know, it would be nice to have secondary characters that don't become rangers. And, you know, I really thought Go Buster was going to go ahead and do that because I would say Go, go Buster would be a good example of this, at least one that I can cite. Uh, because what they did is they had the three main rangers, which they had great backstory and characters, 
They had secondary characters that came into the series to help inform them of their backgrounds. They had the three Bayroids, they had their best friends and their confidants, they had the commander, and they had the two people uh, in the command center of whose names I can't recall because they ended up being superfluous through the series. Now, why did they become superfluous? Because I thought they would matter because the, the girl comes in, it's her first day working for the Go Buster, and of course they give her the expositional dialogue so that she understands, and she's our, and I always thought she was going to be our audience viewpoint character turns out that wasn't the case at all because they're thrown to the wayside as soon as our gold and silver rangers come in you, you know it's like why have those two additional characters if you were just going to bring in these extra rangers and frankly they were doing a good job with the character dynamics before then bringing the gold and silver rangers really superfluous uh yeah the, our gold ranger had an interesting story and it really wasn't that bad um, but if you just tightly focused on our three protagonists, I think it'd be a much better series. But again, half of that series was, was much better than, than the other half. Uh, but why are we going to so many Rangers? Um, I mean, again, looking at Power Rangers, you have to work with what you're given, but there's no rule saying you must adapt every Power Ranger, uh, that, that Sentai has. I mean, Power Rangers Dino Charge could get away with doing just five rangers with not having the gold, graphite, purple, aqua, silver, or talon rangers appear at all within the series. Now, are some people going to be upset at that? Yeah, but if you develop the character of Riley, if you get develop, develop the character of Chase and Tyler and Coda and Shelby, uh, and even have uh, Dr. Morgan there without making her a ranger, I think it would be a stronger series. Because, you know, how that series started, you got Shelby and, and Kendall going up against each other and not liking each other. And we have character conflict and dilemmas, which unfortunately, looking back in hindsight, ha has not continued at this point. Um... But if we had only three rangers, then we can focus on those stories. Because I suspect that's what's happening, is that we had this story between Kendall and Shelby. They were going to develop it, but then you got so many rangers thrown in there that you have to focus your attention someplace else. Because we have to... T Here's the thing about six rangers, too. You have to take time out of your storytelling of your other characters to tell the story of our sixth ranger. So again, let's let's take a look at uh, Tokyudra. You have the five rangers, then Akira comes in. You have to tell his story, and you have to drag it out. And if you talk about dragging out stories, you know we, we get Star Ninja and, and Ninja dragging his story out over and over and over. I mean, that got to be a drag when we could have been developing Fuka as a character. I mean... I, you, they have to sacrifice somebody in order to tell the story of, of the Gold Ranger, of our Sixth Ranger. And and I don't particularly like that, you know, because we, if it's something like Tommy, Tommy was a, a good example of how to bring in a Sixth Ranger, um, is that he's integral to the plot, he's, he's a main element of it, um, and, and, you know, once his arc was over in Green with Evil, they did go back to telling other stories about the other Rangers, and not just Tommy in every single episode. Heck, they wrote him out of the show, so they were kind of forced to tell stories with other characters. Um, they need to be able to bring a Sixth Ranger in without having to sacrifice the others, or again, better yet, just do three rangers all together. I do believe you can do it and hold people's attention as long as you have interesting stories. But, but And here's the thing about, about writing, is that you got character A, B, and C. You have to define character A's relationship to character B, character A's relationship to character C, then B's relationship to A, B's relationship to C, and C's relationship to A, and C's relationship to B. That, that's what you have to go ahead and do. You have to develop those characters. Well, when you got six rangers or ten rangers... How do you talk about their relationships? What is Prince Philip's relationship with Riley? How, how do you connect Philip and Riley? What do they talk about when they're together on screen? Now, Philip and Coda, they have a good relationship. But Philip and Chase, I don't think they've said two words to each other throughout the entire series. Tyler and Shelby, they have a good relationship together. Uh, but what is Tyler's relationship with Chase? What is Tyler's relationship with Coda? The, these are questions that really need to be answered. That if you are writing a story, if you go, you know, if you're if you're in if you're in Professor Tobias's uh, screenwriting class, he's going to ask you that question. Um, tell me about the relationship between Chase and Ivan. 
what is their relationship? And if you answer, well, there is no relationship, then he's going to fail you there because he will tell you, you need to explore the relationship between these two characters. How do they relate to each other? What is, you know, what is the reason that they are together on the same team or when they talk, what do they talk about? Uh, I mean, it's like the Bechdel test, I, I guess, because, you know, obviously Shelby and Kendall pass that because they never talk about men when, when they're together, unless there's an upcoming episode that I'm dreading. Um, but, but yeah, but if you only have three rangers, you can tightly focus it on just those three rangers. Um, okay, aesthetically speaking, ten rangers, yeah, okay, that's fine. We had the Mega War, the Legendary Battle all that stuff. You can have as many rangers as you want for specials and, and crossovers and stuff like that. Um, but I think they need to go at, at least try it. You know, Sun Vulcan was one of the more popular Sentais, uh, for, from my understanding and my research of the series. And, and Sun Vulcan was something that Stan Lee did want to go ahead and develop into an American series. Unfortunately, that just never, never came out. So there has to be something to the three-member format. And also look at some of the more popular Sentais out there. Uh, Hurricaneer is extremely popular for reasons I'm not exactly sure, and that started out with three members. Now how popular is based on the other three members that join, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, you know, a Abba Ranger I, I think is very popular in American audiences. I know Raptor likes it a lot, and that started out with three Rangers. How much of the story is uh, dependent on the uh, Black and White Ranger, I'm not exactly sure. Um, now, Go Buster is, of course, the exception to that rule, but uh, that's everybody's loss. That, that's their loss for not liking Go Buster. So, I, I think to go ahead and wrap this up, having too many Rangers is hurting the story of both Sentai and Power Rangers because, you know, again, Fuka was one of my favorite characters in Nin Ninja. And right now, again, one episode from the end, they're not developing her character. She is still the same. I'm not learning anything interesting about her. She's still my favorite, but they're not doing anything good with her. Hikari was my favorite from Tokyo. At the end, they didn't do anything with Hikari. Uh, I was very disappointed in that. Uh, Albert Smith, Prince Philip, those are two of my favorite characters from Dino Charge, and they got 20 more episodes to try and develop their characters. Are they going to do that? Unlikely, since they're going to focus on everybody else, but but I do hope Coda gets some I interesting screen time there. Um, Again, Katie from Time Force. What did they do with her? Sid from uh, or Sydney from SPD. What did they do uh, with her? Uh, let's see. Who else do we got here? I'm just going to throw a couple of names out there. Jungle Fury. Um, you know what? It's probably a good idea that they didn't develop Lily beyond the superficial. <laughs> and it's good that they didn't develop Gia beyond the superficial as well. Um, but again, the ultimate point is at least one character, a couple of characters are being left in the dust um, be, because they want to focus more attention on, on these other characters. They need to find a way to either balance everybody, either with more episodes or more seasons or better stories, or condense it down. You're getting so large, just go back to being small before you collapse in on yourself. And that might be one of the problems, is that eventually we may get to a point where we have too many rangers in a season, too many characters, that it just can't support that, and something terrible is going to happen. Um, and I think before that, we need to, to let's go back down. You know, I think Raptor will bring up that three-year rule where the next season, will, after the anniversary, we'll have a three-man team. I'm really hoping that when we get done with Zuoger, whether it's good or bad, when we get to the 41st Sentai, we can have a three-man team, or two men, one woman, however you want to look at it, um, and basically say, this is it, three Rangers, no more. Let's challenge ourselves to tell good storytelling with just three characters, and if we can accomplish that... Let's see if we can expand it back to five next season, or maybe six. Uh, because I think they need to prove themselves in this before we start celebrating ten Rangers. Because when Dino Supercharge is, is over, I think we're going to be talking about Coda as an amazing character. I think we're going to be talking about Shelby as an amazing character. But we're going to forget about Albert Smith. We're going to forget about Prince Philip. We're going to forget about Chase. That, yeah, they were rangers. They had stories and they had episodes dedicated to themselves. 
but there's nothing really interesting of substance that's going to make us remember them 20, 30, 40 years into the future. Because, again, Billy, the first Blue Ranger, great story, great character, was around for four seasons, and we still remember him to this day, not because he was the first Blue Ranger, but because of the amazing stories they told about him and the character that he has. And again, Tommy, love him or hate him, they told good stories with them. They gave him flaws. They gave him ambitions. They gave him love interest. They gave him things to worry about, challenges to overcome. That's what makes Tommy a great character, because over the course of, what was it, uh, five seasons, all the stuff they threw at him. Imagine if they threw all of that towards uh, Riley. If Riley had five seasons to develop. And... And, and just, you know, I'm going to say this. I, I, I know y'all hate it when I make reference to Star Trek, but Julian Bashir is a great I, uh, great thing here. Uh, because look at him in Season 1, how green and smug and ch- skirt chaser he was compared to the, the somber, uh, serious, uh, and dedicated character he became in Season 7. Um, they, they developed his character. And I want to see that with Power Rangers. I want to see that with Super Sentai. Um, again, either give more episodes or more seasons beyond just one, or condense it and focus tightly on the characters. And and that's what I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with, but I certainly want to know what you all think. Um, should they go the three-man teams? Uh, and what do you think the advantages and disadvantages of that is? Uh, because again, I, I think it's a great idea. It's something they should definitely try. Three Rangers only. Don't expand. Let's see where that takes us. If it's a success, great. If it's a failure, at least we tried. And then we can go back to five Rangers and only three of them actually mattering by the end. All right, so that's all I've got now. I want to thank you guys for listening. Have a good evening. And the tavern is now closed.